How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <laughs> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. And this guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? Thank God. Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new Smarty Pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! Oh! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc, this guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry, I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> ah, crap, I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad! Son of a... Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you, if you're gonna stay late, don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. Oh, my pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez! Sorry! I thought you was someone else! Maybe uh, I should start wearing a bell? Oh, Wish you'd have thought of that earlier! It's that guy again! What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight to McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in her room getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw a money bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's gonna abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing? Nothing. Why'd you have to 
drag me into this. I didn't do anything. Shut up, shut up. You're in it now. Someone's after me. I need a gun. Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can Wait a second, McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't got time to explain. I think we've been made. <laughs> Whoa, easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? <laughs> I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kind of cold. What do you feds want from me now? The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name, not so? Nice uniform, not so. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! Oh. Jimmy, what's a gabagool? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, chick magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. <laughs> For Canada! And ow! Oh, my stitches popped. <laughs> Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. You hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on, Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the f out of here! Woo! Chick Magnet's giving you a six bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and Unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well, then, I suppose this is goodbye. Really? I never hugged a cop before, unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it. Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> what are you doing? I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on, but first we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details. I don't know, ask Petey. I can, he'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed. Wait, it had an eye missing. Good, good. So we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me. Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Ugh, don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcons. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna 
get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Paul McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? <gasps> Agent McCool's special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking Dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? Try morphine. This sh is awesome. This isn't Chick Magnet. It's Petey. Petey? Hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home. We called them my uncles. No, uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! <laughs> what am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See? A truck full of lambs. <laughs> oh, right. Good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no. There's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy with my little eye two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that, hey, Cheech? Cheech. Aw, he fell asleep. <laughs> Mummy, you don't have to turn on the red light! <sighs> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. Thundering Thunder Bay! Jimmy! <laughs> Gallop like the wind horse, Jimmy's in trouble! Oh, Canada! Where friendship trumps infection every time! Okay, now we run them through the dryer a bunch of times to make them look old. I can't do this. I can lie to you and Pop. But Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now. If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Three more Kimson will be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm going to do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go, it's for the best. For us, at least. Stop double cross. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. <laughs> Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh. We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying? Rum? Rum. Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around. This guy needs help. Oh, 
God, could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron. But what about Calif... Oh... Why the hell are you trying to kill us? You're a fed. I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them. Ah, my eyes! Ah! Do you ever wash your feet? <clears throat> hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback too? Between you and me, my nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know, I'm cold too. No, oh, I mean all the time. We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old barn? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Whose head is Ma gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right, now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <laughs> how? The hard way. <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Ah, the tag was chafing me. So, you threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because I keep money in him, that's why! I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble! <laughs> now, let's have a little talk about how I'm gonna get my money back. <sighs> I'm not the one you want! It's Ma! She dragged me into this! Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? You didn't say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I gonna incriminate myself? Oh, that's great! I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more! We gotta fight back! Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Ah, uh, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time, till help comes. Give me that! Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, Chick Magnet, get him up. Get him up? You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? No, oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. 
You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up. I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool! You're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, Donkey Dong. Ah! Horse! Good boy! Give him hell, horsey! Stop it, horse! You're only stomping lifeless pulp! Hop on, boys! No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism! What do you want from me? I got a craving. Petey told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny, same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears the Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! This! Yes. <laughs> well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. How you doing? You know, back in the old days, you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone fought it. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. Mm. Mm. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? Mm. 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 What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise. I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. <coughs> what language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. <coughs> ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing Mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. 
plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. But cool, that's nuts! You can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream. Wait, no, this is the dream. Or is it? <laughs> what does that mean? This is the end of my career. I can't call for help. What would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely. That's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it. This is my work phone. I have to. No, you don't. <sighs> Special agent, straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how do you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% mock-up is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, oh. McCool. Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo. Open the door. Tutty got shot in the ass. Again. Oh, crap, it's the Gambini crew. Dino, kick it in. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, yo, where's the regular doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. 
Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your saw it and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar or the contusions so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns, shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino, let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now nah, he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me, it's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here, it's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tootie had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? <gasps> of course! Y you're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. never gonna work. What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack. Okay, sorry. Where'd you find his get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, oh, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> Remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise! I, uh, no you weren't. Sure I was. 
I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. <sighs> Great. I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it. Oh, smells like New York back here. Oh, so you're the one who was smoking, Teresa. You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I, I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah, the guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know. It's just a starting point in my search for my... Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it! Going to Harvard, bye! Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York! Somebody give him some hay or something! <gasps> Yo, Doc! What gives? Jesus H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight! Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech. Who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner. Or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this! I think we can totally do this! Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this! It's a beautiful morning in Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama! I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Fritz!
Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father! Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus! Whoa, now, oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still! Leo, you gotta see this! You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing for three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle, my brother, Polly, the brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out of town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse, your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came. On the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, How you doing? It's me, Gina. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm not wearing a seatbelt, neither. Blow me. Before Pops became the fattest stool pigeon in history, he was my hero. If there was an award for Father of the Year, Pop would have got it. Dog Francesco says hello. <laughs> Then this happens. So I look at the FBI guy and say, you stinking feds can blow me. I ain't testifying against nobody. Then the man from the fed says, but the mob is going to kill you and your whole family, Jimmy. You with me so far, kid? I get it. You're turning rats. Just wait. There's more. If you testify, we can give you immunity. Do you know what immunity means? Enough with the fucking puppets! <laughs> 
Now Pops is the puppet and the feds are the ones pulling the strings. This is the thanks I get for saving all your lives. And if you don't think I'm better off dead than living in Canada's icy butt crack, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. You clowns think you can avoid me? We have nap time together every day. Now cough it up. The new kid already took our money. What are you little crap stains trying to pull? Who's this new kid? <sighs> Just give me another wedgie and let me go. Another wedgie? <gasps> Who gave you the first one? Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> 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 the skinniest statue on Earth, dumbass. <gasps> I know this looks bad, but for once, I'm innocent. I think the furnace is on the fritz. What's 10 degrees in American? Don't know. Depends on the exchange rate. Apologies for the intrusion, but I'm here to save the day. What's with the pantyhose? It's a unitard. I'm Maple Man. Maple Man? Canadian superhero? Fighting minor infractions and belligerents everywhere? You look unitotted, Captain Leaf. <gasps> Teresa, why are you dressed up as Sapling Girl? Maple Man's trusty sidekick, who's always getting him out of sticky situations? I'm just wearing what they gave me for my job as a booth babe at Regina Comic Con. <gasps> Do you know what this means? Of course not. You'll be working with Bentley Withermoon, the renowned actor who plays Terrence Timber, AKA Maple Man. Sounds like a lot of nerds. I better bring my pepper spray. Teresa, you have to introduce me to him. So much of my belief system is based on the teachings of Maple Man. Well, it's a hundred bucks for an autograph, 300 for a photo, or a thousand to brush his hair. I have to go sell my stamp collection. And can I borrow your brush? Gina. You have irreparably damaged school spirit here at Celine Dion Elementary. Don't worry, our hearts will go on. The only place that'll accept you now, my dear, is Our Lady of Peace School for Wayward Girls. Not the nuns. No, anything but the nuns! That's right. Enjoy that juice while you still can. <laughs> the only snacks the nuns will give you are warm holy water and stale body of Christ. Yummy! <gasps> Thank you for coming, Mr. McDougal. I came as soon as I got your call. You got a real sultry phone voice. Well, I'm afraid Gina's in a great deal of trouble. Your fancy skeleton statue nearly crushes her, and she's the one in trouble? You got a lot of nerve, Professor. Next thing you know, she'll be blaming you for this hat that I stole off the special ed kid. Well, we talked her down to a one-day suspension. Pretty good for your old man, huh? Just wait till I get my hands on that kid who framed me. Knock out his teeth for me, will you? I miss reading Rainbow for this. Five seconds and I'll be shaking hands with a syndicated television legend. Okay, that's it for today. Maple Syrup Man will be back tomorrow. For some reason. Teresa! Teresa! Introduce me! Uh, Tabitha, I had some notes regarding your booth babing skills. Shall we discuss them over a drink? Sorry, I left my fake ID at home. <laughs> Don't worry. No one asks for ID in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really tired from wincing at people's breath all day. Most girls in your position would leap at the chance to get a few tips from an industry veteran. Sorry you were in the war, but thanks anyway. See you tomorrow! Teresa, you gotta introduce me to- Buzz off, nerd! <laughs> Oh, Katie! I didn't recognize you in your pajamas! Can I ask you a question? Shoot. You ever worried at... I said shoot! Come on, it's your turn! Oh, right. 
<laughs> you missed. What a loser. Cheech, you ever worry things are slipping out of your control? Yeah, but I got special underpants for that. It's this mystery kid at school. He's haunting me, and I don't even know what he looks like. The kid without a face? How am I supposed to sleep now? Let me tell you, Francis Bacon once said... No, wait, it was Kevin Bacon. He said, knowledge is power. Yeah, I should snoop around, find out who this kid is. Good idea, Cheech. Oh, and if you call me a loser again, I'll slice your fucking nuts off. Ooh, you're tough, but fair. <laughs> Get the file on the new kid and check the teacher's lounge for snacks. Not in that order. What the hell is this? In case you gotta hack into the mainframe or some shit. Hey, why is my locker open? What the hell is this? It's a picture of the best summer of my life. <gasps> Carmine! I'm back! Oof. That's for getting me suspended. Not that I care, but still. And that's for breaking Celine Dion. <coughs> what was that for? That's because I missed you. I'm impressed. Must have took a lot of determination to track us down. You know, your pop killing my pop and all, it, it gets you out of bed in the morning. That, and I wanted to see you again. Muscling in on my marks was a nice touch. And you're short. Shut up! I grew one and a quarter inches since last summer. I mean on the vig, you chiseling mook. I got expenses. Taking a cab all the way from Brooklyn wasn't cheap. The meat is still running. You want to lift to your house? What was I, born yesterday? Come on, I'm gonna find Cheech sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. These vendettas take a lot out of you. Well, good luck finding him. The guy's a phantom. He lives in the shadows and moves as silent as a warm breeze. Hurry up, Gina. Cheech Falcone is getting bored. Anyway, Carmine, I ain't gonna make getting to Cheech easy for you. I wouldn't want you to. Last time I had any real fun was when you and me mixed it up at camp. You mean when I kicked your ass? How do you know I didn't let you kick my ass? And the gloves are off. <laughs> if you say so. I left you a juice box and some crackers. See you soon. You backstabbing son of a whore! Open this door right now and I'll let you keep some of your limbs! Fruit punch. Oh, you remembered my favorite! What's she doing here? Replacing someone who doesn't know how to play ball. Oh, I know how. Just not with yours. Sadly, Tabitha, you lack the talent to portray a convincing sapling girl. Like it takes talent to have a unitard jammed up your butt. I'll have you know I majored in unitards at Juilliard. Come on, Petey. Let's get away from Doctor Who wants me to touch his wiener. But I sold my stamp collection. I told you the furnace wouldn't fix itself. Now the toilet water's frozen. I know, I've been chipping yellow ice all night trying to get my cell phone out. Chase dropped a deuce and it's just sitting there, mocking me. That's it, I'm calling the repairman. Is Cheech here? Nope. Damn it! Between you and me, you don't really like Cheech much, do ya? What are you talking about? He's great! I mean, he's all right. He means well. Actually, he does it, but he's my uncle! What do you want? But if he wasn't around no more, we'd be okay, right? Maybe you would, but who the hell would I hang out with? What, did you kill him? How'd you do it? Me and Ma have a bet. <laughs> Holy crap! I was kidding around! You did kill him! Jesus Christ, Gina! I didn't touch him! I haven't seen him since last night! <laughs> it's all my fault! Kid, relax. I saw him an hour ago. He went to them Nerd Olympics with Teresa. Why do you think he was dead? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. And I wasn't crying. What do you mean you can't get here for two days? It's so cold, I can see Cheech's breath. I thought Comic-Con was gonna be a comedy show for convicts. You know, where every punchline is, don't drop the soap. <laughs> You know who should be in prison? Bentley Withamoon. He almost was, three times, but he always got off. It's ironic, nothing sticks to Maple Man. Why are you sticking up for him? The guy's a pig. He's not a pig. He's the product of the forbidden love between man and Maple Tree. You just can't see the real him past your nerd boner. 
By the way, you should wear a jock under that costume. Man, I ain't seen so much butt crack since we extorted the plumber's union. Maybe there was something else you did wrong? He fired me because I wouldn't put out! What? Guy sounds like a creep. No respect for the ladies. Yo, space jugs! Let's see if I can come in peace. Cookie, shame on you for even thinking of calling a repairman when you have me. A housewife? Alone? <gasps> a repairman? Oh, that reminds me of a dirty movie I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Strange. Ah, there's nothing like using your hands to bring back the heat. Good thing I brought my big tool. That was a line in the movie. <gasps> Did you ever appear I in... don't know what you're referring to, Cookie. I'm just here to perform some sweaty, dirty work. That's another line! Ah, you're the Randy Repairman! Damn my gambling days. I knew that video would come back to haunt me. Sir, can I see your wristband? Ah! <laughs> How is this the first I'm hearing about Gambini's kid? What, I gotta tell you every little thing? You do when our lives are at stake? What if he squealed on us to the mob? Then we'd be having this conversation in hell. The day Cheech gets taken out by a six-year-old, I'll eat my shirt. Well, get ready to choke down some polyester, because this kid's the real deal. Got a little crush there, kid? Yeah. I mean, no! Shut up, dumbass! All right, to be continued. Now, let's find Cheech quick before we wind up relocated to Yellow Horse or White Knife or some f***ing place. <gasps> God, you can almost smell the virginity in here. Hello? I'm down here. How you doing? I'm Gina's friend. That's funny, because Gina doesn't have any friends. Oh, you calling me a liar, Gina's mom? Nobody calls me a liar. Where do you get off? What, did somebody drop a deuce in your cereal this morning? You dried up old floozy? Oh, yeah, okay, now it makes sense. Come on in and wait for her. So, what's a guy got to do to get some milk and cookies around here? Oh, you're a hungry little spark plug, ain't ya? <laughs> yeah, hungry for revenge. <laughs> Good one. Hello? Cookie? Nice to finally meet you, Cheech. You're bigger than I imagined. Has everyone seen my movie? Who wants cookies? Hey, where'd you go? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god! <gasps> hey, you're not Cheech. No shit, you little monster. Ah, Jesus, McCool! Oh. Ah. Ah. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <gasps> Hold me, Randy. Tighter. Cookie, get a hold of yourself. Who was that crazed demon child? It was Gina's friend. Oh, that explains a lot. But why was he have to cheech? I don't know. Let's go down to the comic book convention and ask him. A comic book convention? And I get to kill Cheech? Double win! Gah! Jeez, I hope Pop's having better luck finding Cheech than I am. <clears throat> Oh, Gina! That's for locking me in my locker. Thanks for the snacks, though. Hey, can I ask you something? Say you do off Uncle Cheech. What next? Oh, I got plans. I want you and me to run away together. Hit the open road like Bonnie and Clyde. You want to get gunned down in slow motion at the end of an old movie? No, I mean the bank robbing parts. But none of the kissy parts. Ew, you're gross. Maybe the huggy parts. Don't get your hopes up, sicko. But look, do you really gotta kill my uncle? Of course I do. Good luck finding Cheech in this joint. The man's a master of disguise and concealment. He could be standing right behind me and you'd never know. Go, Gina, spot your uncle Cheech a couple of bucks for a slice, will you? Damn it! I've been looking for you, mister. Not another one. Look, Junior, I know what you're thinking. But I ain't your father. Holy crap, you're even dumber than the legends. Time to put you out of my misery. Yo, look, everybody. It's a midget from Game of Thrones. Oh, 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 Funny, huh? They never
never look as tall in person. But this is official police business. Let me in. Not until I see a wristband, sir. Can we wrap this up soon, sugar cheeks? Oh. I'm getting right as cramp. Hold! What's the meaning of this, you me wannabe? In season one, episode four of The Adventures of Maple Man, you vow to stand against injustice, no matter where it occurred, even if the hour was late and the location less than convenient. If you want to quote the show to me, that's an extra $60. Silence! Maple Man stands for fairness, equality, and decency. You stand for none of those things, you egocentric, misogynist hypocrite! How dare you! How dare you, sir? You have no right to fill the sacred Maple Man unitard. Security? Sure, hide behind your goons. Oh, hi, Jetsy. Ah! <laughs> Maple Man, thank God you're here. I fell through this table. Uh, would Cheech McDougal please proceed to the information desk? That's the big table near the front door. If you get confused, tell a grown-up you're lost. Uh, over and out. Well, if it ain't Jimmy Falcone. Oh, come on! Look at you, excuse me! Teach McDougal, do not come to the information desk! Repeat, do not make up your mind! Gee, kid, you got the same psychotic spark in your eye as your old man. I also got his propensity for violent blood-soaked revenge. And his inability to whistle. Kid, look, I owe you a huge apology. I'm sorry for what happened with your pops. He was a, well, I won't say a good man. He was a man. Let's leave it at that. You call that half-ass tap dance an apology? You murderized him. He was gonna kill my uncle, then I would've had to kill him back, so we skipped a step. But don't take it out on Cheech. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry. I promised Gina I'd never touch you. Who's worried? But that's nice. She's a good kid. Oh, she's great. Easy there, Romeo. But listen, you kind of already got your revenge on me. How do you figure? Look at me. Look around you. I'm living like a schmuck here. I mean, my life ain't bad, but it's a far fucking cry from good. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, for Christ's sake. For the last time, kid. I never been your mother. <sighs> Let me tell you something, you ignominious little snot stain. I am a classically trained actor. If it weren't for all the money I make and during these weekends with you halitosis-ridden cretins, I'd never be caught dead in this asinine outfit providing masturbatory fantasy fodder for overgrown adolescent twerps. And furthermore, I hate Canada and Maple Man can gobble my knob! <gasps> Did you get that, Teresa? He's a one-take wonder. And post. I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! You look fat in that suit. Oh. Teresa! That's not nice. What? Bitch took my job. I told you I wouldn't make this easy for you, so you're gonna have to go through me. You know, for a guy you can't stand, you sure do seem to care a lot about Cheech. Trust me, this is killing me. I'm gonna regret it the next time he opens his mouth. Wait a sec. Does your mother do hoop waxes down at the Korean spa? See what I mean? <sighs> All right. I changed my mind about off and Cheech, but not about... What? That sounds mushy. So? Spit it out. Nah, some things are better left unsaid. What are you, chicken? Shut up! I'm no chicken. You're a chicken. Yeah, yeah, I'm rubber, your glue. Just shut the f*** up and tell me! <sighs> I didn't change my mind about how much I like you. Um, I'm glad about that. And being glad hurts my face. You make my face hurt too, Gina. So, what do you say you and me shake down a couple of these booths? Why not? These dorks have been bullied all their lives. They know the drill. <gasps> You're under arrest for assaulting a police officer, young man. It's maximum security juvie for you. It'll be no picnic, my fine friend. Lights out by 10 and only four hours of social media per day. McCool, wait! 
Aww. Guess I'll have to take a rain check. Guess so. But those blowjob screws won't keep me down for long. You gonna wait for me? <laughs> Screw that. That's my gal. Well, son, I hope you picked up some comics to read where you're going. For Canada! A dumping ground for American culture since 1867! I knew it! There is a more north! Yes, Jimmy, and this is where we'll be until I'm certain the elusive Carmine Gambini is no longer a threat. How soon did he give you the slip? Somewhere between the washrooms and the parking lot. That's my boy. Petey, did you see how many hits our Maple Man video got? Yeah, but look what they're calling it. Idiot fan pwned by Maple Man. I can't take this no more. I'm walking home. I'll just head south. How hard can it be? Which way is south? We're so far north, it's all friggin' south! Oh, God! Saskatchewan, la 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 la